is The Conversation on Hawaii Public Radio. I'm Catherine Cruz. A day after the state announced a second person has tested positive for COVID-19, an advocacy group for the elderly is pressing for answers about contingency plans in the event the situation escalates here in the islands. Larry Geller is with the Kokua Council. He's speaking up on behalf of seniors. The Kokua Council is a senior advocacy organization, really old, I think founded in 1974. So our antenna is kind of buzzing for these kind of issues. And this coronavirus issue is going to hit us. It's unavoidable. It's going to be here. And while we read in the uh, uh, on Twitter and the newspaper, stock up on food and so forth, there are good tips, very valuable tips for most people. But there are certain people who can't line up at Costco to buy that toilet paper, who, uh, they may be homebound, they may have mobility issues like wheelchairs. These are the older folks. And it, there's another thing about that demographic. Not only can they not prepare, but they're the most vulnerable. Um, I've, I've read on Twitter that the death rate is only 2%, so not to worry, it's not that bad. But for older adults, uh, I think the age range is 70 to 79. The death rate is 8%. And in the group older than that, it's 14.8%. I'm sure this number will change, but that's what I found on the internet. And that is a very high risk. Right, and they're, so they're vulnerable. One, they, they can't get to Costco to do, maybe just get to some of the, the basic preps, but they're the ones that are more likely to be affected. That's right. And also there's a group of people of all ages, but particularly older folks with immune disorders. I have an immune disorder. If I get the, the uh, virus, I'm very likely dead. And I, I know this, but um, so if they, if they announce a quarantine or a uh, stay at home situation, I'm gonna stay at home, but I got my toilet paper anyway. <laughs> so there's that. But do we even know how many people are stuck at home or the, uh, in condos needing oxygen? Do we even know how many people need to get to dialysis? If there's a quarantine declared, what happens to the folks who have to break the quarantine? Is, uh, are they gonna be transported? Uh, there's so many questions. Do we need a registry of these people? The condos don't keep a list. Uh, as far as I know, the state has no list of people who need to get di dialysis. Now, they can create one pretty easily, but have they? We don't know. So basically, what Kukua Council is asking, first of all, the state needs to prepare for folks in nursing homes who have mobility issues like wheelchairs, uh, need oxygen, need home care, the caregiver is coming every day or something like that. What happens when the caregiver can't come? What about Meals on Wheels? There's hundreds of people on Meals on Wheels. How are they going to get fed if there are travel restrictions? So these are questions. Not only do we want to ask them, but we'd like to get the answers. What have you folks done to reach out to the state to get a handle on this? Well, we've spoken to agencies, you know, different agencies that serve seniors to try to find out uh, if they have been contacted. By and large, now, my research is not perfect, but by and large, they have not. So, uh, and besides, the information has to get to the individuals, to the older folks and their families and to their caregivers. Do, will their caregivers even have masks? They're in short supply. Um, w there's another issue, which is more general even than seniors, but certainly applies to seniors, is let's say somebody comes down with the symptoms, coughing, high fever over 104, and they say, uh-oh, I better be tested. They, uh, they'll probably call the doctor. They may, they may call 911. Who knows where they're gonna call because they don't have instructions, but uh, their doctor may say, yeah, you need to be tested and say where that's gonna happen. And they make it uh, confined to a hospital. This is not gonna be uh, optional. If somebody has shows the symptoms, uh, they'll end up in an isolation ward in a hospital. Uh, who pays for that? There was a, Twitter is a great source of information, uh, if you believe it or not, but one, one report was somebody was uh, confined to a hospital, 
uh, he had no choice. When he, he, he survived, he recovered. And when he came out, he had a bill for $3,725. It was charged to him, his hospital stay. So there are very fundamental questions like that that we need to know. And predictably, older folks are going to have the most issues. A young person may, who has toilet paper will be confined uh, at home. Just stay home for 14 days and check in every day with DOH or they'll check with you, however it works. But the older folks, many of them don't even have computers and don't have these tips. They, they won't have supplies. They won't know how the Meals at Wheels are going to be delivered. Meals at Wheels may not know how they're going to do this yet. We have, at this point, had the gift of time, and we've watched to see what's happened in China and in Italy and in uh, Korea and in Japan and in San, now San Francisco with that one cruise ship. And so, you know, uh, you know we see the cases spiking, the, the cases in Seattle, in the, the senior home, the elderly home, and, and that... That, of course, is, you know, the red flag. You've seen it happen in the prison. So everybody's asking, okay, what are we doing here? Seattle's a great example of uh, something we don't want to go wrong in Hawaii. There is a nursing home just outside of Seattle, and uh, I think more than 50 residents and staff members showed signs of the virus, of infection. Right now, unless it's changed, vendors can't serve the facility. They... Out, uh, Family members visited them, and they, you know, it's, you could be symptomless and still be a carrier of this virus. They visited and then they went home to their own families and to the community. This virus could be spreading in the community uh, because of that nursing home incident. I think 10 people died. Right, and I think in that case, nobody knew of any travel uh, connection. And so they were like, okay, it's somewhere in the community and somehow it got into this home for the elderly. Right. And the average age for people in nursing homes is 83, the most vulnerable, most, most likely to suffer consequences from the virus. Also, the vendors, they serve more than one nursing home. So they've gone, by now, they've gone to different nursing homes. And uh, I, I know the people in Seattle and Washington State are watching, but we have at least the benefit of their experience. And we should be watching and we should be prepared uh, I don't know exactly how that works. It probably is very complicated. But we have people in the Department of Health and the state government uh, who know. And we even, uh, Governor Ige assigned Lieutenant Governor Josh Green to be the uh, uh, coronavirus preparedness coordinator. Right. We do have the emergency declaration. So the, the counties and the state government are are ready to do what they need to do. So we've got that in place, kind of like when the hurricane comes, right? They do declare an emergency because they know we're, it, we're gonna get hit and we want access to whatever federal funding is available to be able to respond. Right, uh, now we've had hurricanes before, but we haven't had this before. So this, uh, we have to anticipate and make guesses, but we need the people with experience uh, with emergencies, you know, to, to do that uh, work and communicate with each of us. Every concerned person should have access to this information. It sounds like you want reassurance. I want, yes, I want reassurance that they've done the, the preparation and that they've disseminated the information. Somebody on dialysis probably really wants to know how they're gonna to get to the dialysis. They, they have to have it like, you know, every couple of days. And so they, let's say the quarantine is uh, declared and you need dialysis within two days, what happens? Right, and if you rely on the handy van, what happens? Exactly, exactly. We don't want to be promoting hysteria, but we are watching the rest of the world and we just need to know how prepared are we? Yeah, we have to avoid hysteria, but you know, I'll take hysteria if that's what it is, but I don't know what it takes to get People, there's so many people, this, the average person is, uh, is a concern. What are we gonna do? But we need to look specifically at the elderly population because they are the ones who will not necessarily recover. We're looking at very dire consequences for many people. This is not an easy task. This is not an easy thing we're asking of our state government. And I think uh, we recognize it, but we've gotta ask these questions. We've gotta demand the answers. All right, well, Larry Geller, thank you very much. Thank you. 
That was Larry Geller with Kokua Council expressing fears that our kapuna may have about potential impacts of the coronavirus COVID-19. The Kokua Council held a news conference this morning. Lieutenant jo- uh, Governor Josh Green was there uh, answering questions about testing. I'm going to speak to what always should happen. Okay. An individual like that should get tested. Uh, the challenge has been that the restrictions that were placed on us by the CDC up until last Monday prohibited any testing for any individuals that were not from the, the countries that were most affected, China, South Korea, Italy, Iran, so on, uh, Japan. So that individual, in my opinion, should have been tested and that test should be expedited. We can do between 250 and 500 tests per week. We must do that. That's from our public sector testing. In just a few short days, we will be able to use our private labs, which just means that anytime you go to the labs, they can swab the back of your throat and get a strep test. This test is a little bit more invasive, not much more. Requires a swab deep into the sinus, and that test should have been done for that individual. Ultimately, it was done at the hospital. I think that what's happening is there has been a severe rationing of tests because of a concern that we wouldn't be able to test people in intensive care units. My strong recommendation to our Department of Health, who are working very hard, and all providers out there, is to get the test now. We should max out our testing every single day in this brief last window before we have the private sector come on. I've spoken with all of our labs each and every day, including today twice, to make sure that they expedite it immediately. That was Lieutenant Governor Josh Green talking about the testing for the uh, corona virus COVID-19 at a news conference earlier today.